Rolling Stone has ramped up its damage control this week after issuing a controversial apology on Friday. It all centers on an explosive story published last month recounting a gang rape at the University of Virginia. Friday, the magazine said it was too quick to believe everything the alleged victim said. Now the publication is blaming itself. Rolling Stone magazine admits it made a mistake, first by believing everything an alleged rape victim told them, and second for not seeking out her alleged attackers. The original November 19th piece told the story of a student named Jackie who recounted being brutally gang-raped by at least seven men at a campus fraternity party in 2012, further claiming the school failed to respond. The article led to outrage across the nation. In an apology issued Friday, Rolling Stone said, in the face of new information, there now appear to be discrepancies in Jackie's account. And it went on to state that their trust in her was misplaced. Now the magazine is backing away from that statement, saying instead, these mistakes are on Rolling Stone, not on Jackie. The fraternity named in the article, Phi Kappa Psi, maintains they have no knowledge of the claims made in the story, and they've pointed out several discrepancies. But many students on the UVA campus are hoping any inaccuracies in this one article will not take the spotlight off what they see as a greater issue. As much as it matters that the, the article is telling the truth or not, I think we should still just focus on the problem that it brought up. I think people definitely want to like take this article not as a negative aspect, like condemning the university or anything, but take it in a positive way and like move forward in fixing the problem that's clearly pre prevalent. If the problem is clearly prevalent, Rolling Stone has clearly made it murky. Many people are also questioning what kind of effect the article will have on other sexual assault victims moving forward. Joining me now to talk more about that is Stacy Malone, the executive director of the Victim Rights Law Center. Welcome to Greater Boston, Stacy. Thank you very much. I think that's the heart of the issue here, is the credibility of the accusers. We've seen it before with the infamous Duke lacrosse case. Now, this was explosive. I don't have to tell you, you're in this business. I'm sure you followed every detail of this story. And now it peer, appears to be slightly unraveling, whether totally, actually her roommate came out today and said that largely the story is true and she corroborated it, but still. It, it has shed doubt on it. Absolutely. I think at the crux of all of this, we know that a sexual assault happened. No one is saying that Jackie wasn't sexually assaulted. There are some discrepancies in the facts, but that was the obligation of the journalist mm -hmm. to investigate that and do her job in reporting the story, which she obviously didn't do. And then I think Rolling Stone backpedaling yes. by now blaming the victim it was, was just incredible horrific. incredible that they placed the blame on her, that, you know, that their trust was misplaced, and rather than saying... Our trust was misplaced in our reporter, not in her. Absolutely. Because the reporter, as you know, agreed not to go find the attackers. I mean, that's journalism 101. It is. And I think oftentimes in rape and sexual assault cases, um, the victim may not identify immediately yeah. who those perpetrators are, which may be an obstacle for the journalist. But mm -hmm. regardless, there were so many people um, that the victim had spoken to, it was very easy to corroborate, corroborate a lot of that evidence, which it seems like she didn't do. Mm -hmm. With that said, though, I think um, the work has now been done. And we have seen that what Jackie experienced happened, and we believe her, and we know it happened. So now we look at what did UVA do, and what did Rolling mm -hmm. Stone do, and what's the impact going to be on victims that want to come but, forward? But, but do we, I mean, don't you think somebody has to go back, find the, the, the perpetrators, who are the ones who are, have alleged to have done this? I, I think the whole door needs to open up again. That somebody, probably not Rolling Stone, maybe the Washington Post, somebody needs to go back at this, name the people, get that side of the story, so that there's not, so that so the doubt is clear one, once and for all. Well, I think what we need to be careful to do is not to put the rape victim on trial. And I think that that can happen a lot when we talk about where the blame should shift to. And right now, the blame is totally mm -hmm. focused on the victim. I would rather see the Office for Civil Rights has done a really great job, especially over the past couple of years, of making sure that universities are handling sexual mm -hmm. misconduct right. seriously on their campus. So I would rather have them look at what UVA is doing, what other colleges are doing, when a survivor comes forward and makes that report. Because it's getting better. And I think that's what Rolling Stone was trying to do, was trying to expose this really important Important issue. But they also dismissed whatever the university did, and, and that's why I'm saying somebody needs to go back at this because now they're saying there wasn't even an event at that particular fraternity house that night. So if there was no event there, there was nobody there, and she claims that she was lured there in a very specific way to be 
gang raped. Well, we're talking about a Friday night in September at UVA. There may not have been an official event, but you cannot tell me there was not a party at that fraternity house. Yeah, it's, it's probably true, but somebody, there had to be witnesses to it. I mean, to be, but I'm just saying some, some other journalistic entity needs to go back at this because as we, as we started this discussion, there will always be doubt. And if there's doubt on this one, there's going to be doubt on the next one. But you know what, Emily? It's always going to be one victim, one school, one perpetrator. This is going to happen over and over again. I would rather see our energy focused mm -hmm. toward fixing the systemic problem that we have. Campus sexual assault is an epidemic in this country, and we're taking great strides to improve that. And here Rolling Stone you know, takes liberty yeah. with their journalism and could be backpedaling all the work that's mm -hmm. been done over the past few years. What, yeah, what do you think of some of these? Uh, Harvard has got a new policy. Uh, California with the no means no or whatever it is. I mean, are, the, are these all positive steps or are some of them a little ridiculous? I think they are very positive steps, but what gets so confusing for everyone is that people think that all rape victims should go to the police yeah. and that schools should not be handling this. Yeah. And the reality is, is that there's a 2% national conviction incarceration rate of rapists. So rape victims are not getting justice mm -hmm. in the criminal justice system. And the other reality is, is most of these campus sexual assault victims, they want to stay in in school. Yes. They want to stay on their educational trajectory. So do the, so do the boys. And, and alcohol is often involved. I mean, I was reading a whole bunch of these today. And I'm not saying that, mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't malfeasance or wrongdoing somewhere, but when it's alcohol fueled, it's hard to. And alcohol it. is the perfect tool to rape mm -hmm. a university freshman. And it, I will tell you, at the Victim Rights Law Center, between September and Thanksgiving break, we get more calls mm -hmm. for campus sexual assault victims than throughout the whole entire year. Wow. All right. Stacey Malone, let's stay on this. Thank Thanks you.